on the All Woman Show. It's all about beauty and makeup. And before we come to the 21st century, let me give you a brief on the history of cosmetics. It started at least 6,000 years ago and it has spread to almost every society on earth. Lipsticks and blushes were made from red ultra, a pigment from tinted clay. Exfoliates, anti-wrinkle creams, methods for the elimination of stretch marks among others might sound modern but were also some of the beauty practices thousands of years ago. The use of cosmetics was first seen in ancient Egypt and Greece, with castor oil playing an important role. The oil was used as a protective balm. In Egypt, both men and women wore cosmetics. They decorated their eyes by applying dark green on the under eyelid and also used coal to outline them. The coal was made up of lead, copper, burnt almonds, soot and other ingredients that have disinfectant qualities. For lip, the ancient Egyptians used a type of rouge to stain their lips and cheeks. They used to squeeze out purple-red color from iodine and bromine. But this combination was a deadly ingredient that led to serious diseases. It later came to be known as the kiss of death. Now, according to some sources, Queen Cleopatra's lipstick was made of carmine beetles and ants eggs. When worked in a pestle, the carmine beetles gave a strong red color and the ants eggs provided the base ingredient. Looking at the ancient Greeks, they were also into the use of cosmetics. In fact, they wanted an appearance that was not natural to them. The Greek valued more than anything else long and golden locks and pale porcelain skin, which was a sign of prestige and beauty. The more pale one was, the richer he looked. Unfortunately, most Greek women ended up painting themselves with white lead, a very toxic substance, and the end results were tragic. Lead poisoning killed many Greek women. However, this paint needed a smoothing foundation. So the Greek women slathered creams made with honey all over their faces to keep it moisturized and make it more shiny and to glow more. Other women sought a more extreme way of bleeding themselves in order to achieve a natural pale look. Lips and cheeks were gently brightened with red colored paste. Lipsticks were made with red iron oxide and orchard clay or olive oil with beeswax. Olive oil was an essential ingredient of eyeshadow as well. It was mixed with brown charcoal and just like the 21st century, eyebrows played a big role in enhancing beauty. But the Greek, both men and women preferred a unibrow. They connected their eyebrows with a dark powder. By the middle of the 1st century AD, Romans widely used cosmetics and one of the Roman philosophers wrote, A woman without paint is like food without salt. 1653, an English pastor once led a movement declaring that face painting was the devil's work and that women who put brush to mouth were trying to catch others and to kindle a fire and flame of lust in the hearts of those who cast their eyes upon them. During the early years of the 20th century, makeup became fashionable in America and Europe due to the influence of ballet, theater, and the most influential new development of all, the movie industry in Hollywood. Fast forward to the 21st century and the use of cosmetics has grown tremendously in Kenya. Many high-end products are being introduced into the market and Kenyans are not shying away from the rather expensive products. The older generation, um, they're very conservative um, in, in, in some ways. In terms of how they look, they still want to look like themselves. They don't want to be overdone. They're also a bit afraid of color. They don't want very bright colors. Yeah, and the, the, younger, the younger, you know, ladies like a more natural look. speak to Dr. Joyce Kikunda, who is the owner of Linton's Beauty World. Linton's has just launched the second Mac store in Kenya and the first standalone clinic store in Africa. We are so thrilled that we opened a second Mac store in Nairobi. Actually not just in Nairobi, let me say in East, East and Central Africa. You remember we opened another one last year at the village market. Now we have this one at the Garden City to serve the people who are enjoying our Zika Highway.
A pharmacist by profession, many people thought she was making the biggest mistake of her life when she said that she was going to expand her pharmacy with cosmetics. Her lecturers were so appalled that they decided to try and convince her to change her mind. In life, every individual has a passion. It does not matter what you go to the university to study or what, what job, first job you get. There is that something in you that keeps on bugging you. So as I was doing pharmacy, I always felt that my place was in beauty. I used to practice a lot with beauty products, personally. And when we started our pharmacy, way back before you were born, in the early 80s, we introduced an aspect, some counters of beauty products there. And our partners were kind enough to give me the training, to offer me the training that was required. And it, it, I found it was so easy that actually the pharmacy was a stepping stone for me to understand beauty even better. There isn't much difference between the origin of, 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 of medicines that are used to treat diseases and the origin of cosmetics that are used to enhance and to beautify our skin. The origins are the same, mostly plant origins. Uh, the chemicals are the same. It just, uh, where is it targeted? Some of my colleagues went to further their pharmacies to specialize in other parts and organs of the body. For instance, kidneys, to, treat, to be treating people who suffer from diabetes, cardiology, all those sorts of things. So it's, it's really not crazy or the way people thought it was crazy for me to take this line because all I did is identify with the dermatology bit of, of, the, of the medical field. So at the beginning I worked very closely with dermatology and they helped me a lot also. Then our partners, the people who, who manufacture these products, they would train us, they would train me how to, to do it. And as the, the um, business grew, our counters grew, I could not be able to handle that on my own. It was time to train others. And I'm one believer of equipping other people. When I know something, I want you also to know something. Linton's Beauty World, which sells high-end international brands such as Clinique, Nimue, Mary Kay, Clarins and Black Opal, attributes Kenyan women embracing the beauty industry to the success of their MAC cosmetic store, which is the second one in East and Central Africa. However, it was difficult to convince stakeholders at the United States cosmetic brands that Kenya was ready for their product. You convince by doing the right thing. Uh, the best way you can and when people realize that with what you have with the other products that you have you are doing the best you are the best in the country they actually come looking for you that's what we find now but before we got there we had to struggle it was challenging to convince them that Kenya East Africa is the right place to be at, at such a time as this um, like I told you, our journey started with them like four or five years ago at the junction. I remember telling somebody that it took over ten years of trying to convince New York that we could handle their products. So finally, we waited until they opened their offices in South Africa, the offices that were now to serve this region here. That's how we manage now to, to get the product. The demand for original high-end cosmetics products has risen among Kenyan ladies and many are not shy to spend on the genuine merchandise. I'm so happy with our Kenyan ladies. Since we launched the mark, first mark shop at the village market, I have realized that people are able to detect the fake, the counterfeit from the genuine. Plus, we advocate at Linton's Beauty World or at our market stores, what matters is the experience 
and the, um, the service that we offer you. If you go to any other shop that sells counterfeit, you'll be able to know because they do not even have testers to test you on. They do not have... Every month we get something called newness, the latest in the market. And if you go to those other shops, you will not find anything like, like that because they are not connected to the manufacturer, to the, to the, to the supplier who is telling us every moment we have this new, this is the latest. So we are at par with what is happening at, in New York, in South Africa, in Dubai, in London. We are at par. Makeup has become deeply embedded in our society that critics are of the idea that by creating advertisement with unrealistic images, it has resulted in low self-esteem and confidence. People who are not embracing this, it's just like dressing. I tell people, taking care of your skin first and foremost, which we advocate for, proper skin care before you apply makeup. It is a part of health. Just the same way you are being told to take lots of water, it will cleanse your kidneys, it will make you healthy, it will revitalize you. The same thing with your skin. When your skin looks good, you are confident, you can go to any office, you can stand up anywhere and speak when you know that you look good. It enhances that confidence to yourself and even the way the other people look at you. Just like uh, you can imagine if, if it's on a um, Monday and you are walking to somebody's office with a t-shirt. You know how Kenyan people look at you. What, what's wrong with you? Are you on leave? Are you depressed? Or, or what's wrong? So the same thing with our ladies nowadays. To get out of the house without makeup, a lot of them say that it's like you feel there's something you're missing. It's like you are, you are naked in some part. So I encourage people to look, take care of their skin from inside and from out. We don't just say apply products, apply products without actually going to the depth of asking you, how is your nutrition? How is your lifestyle? Do you rest enough? Do you take enough water? Do you eat balanced meal? So we advocate at Linton's Beauty World, we advocate a all-rounded uh, all encounter. That's why we say beauty inside out. It starts from inside to out. For me, makeup is a yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I love makeup. Yes. I believe you, we're all beautiful, but makeup accentuates your look. Yes. You know, it just brings up your features. Mm -hmm.